Hey everybody, Michael Rosso here. Today I'm with the Revere 8 camera. This is the Model 88. There are millions of these cameras out there. They're very inexpensive to buy on eBay. I've shot with it and I highly recommend it. It's a really, really great camera. Uh, this camera was made in the 1940s, I believe. Uh, and today I'm going to give a quick overview of how to use the camera. The overview does not take the place of an instruction manual, but it is, think of it as Think of it as a crash course in getting started. Firstly, this is the way I received this camera. And it came with one lens, which is a 13 millimeter lens. And for regular eight millimeter film, a 13 millimeter lens is considered a normal lens. These cameras work by winding. Simply wind the cameras. And here is your shutter. This here is, a, is the uh, frames per second, 16 frames per second, which is the norm for regular eight. You can vary this. I shoot at 16 frames per second. Uh, you could shoot at 24 if you wish, uh, but I've been shooting at 16. It's the, the norm for regular eight millimeter. This is the footage counter, which we'll get back to in a second. This is the compartment where you would load your film. And this camera uses standard or regular eight, also known as double eight, which is eight millimeter film on a spool, which in fact is 16 millimeter in width. And the reason it's called double eight is because you will shoot one side of this, then flip it, shoot the other side of it and then when you send it out for processing the lab will process this film slit it splices together and then you will wind up with a 50 foot roll of processed eight millimeter film so you would buy double eight or regular eight millimeter film the film photography project sells brand new foma black and white 100 iso and very soon we're introducing our own Cine 8 brand film, which will be black and white 50 ISO and color 50 ISO coming soon. So you have your Revere 88 or any other camera similar. Once you look at the insides of where you load it, you'll notice that similar cameras, whether it's a Bell & Howell, Revere, Kodak, that the loading is very, very similar. And once you master the loading of one, you could pretty much load any of these cameras. So the first thing I do is take out the take up spool and get ready with your film. You can load in uh, dim light. Do not load directly in sunlight. And you want your emulsion side. The shiny side is the base side. This is the emulsion side. Your emulsion side always faces the lens. And in many cases, these cameras were designed for moms and dads, so they're not that difficult to load. And for this particular model, there's the, the gate, the known as the film gate. There's a little door here that you just open. See the little door? By just pushing this down and opening the little door. And then I will Take my film. Remember the emulsion side has to face the lens. So I usually put my film into the camera. Uh, it may be a little tricky at first, so block out some time so you don't get the film sweats. Make sure you put the cat out, the dog out, give your kids something to do, send your significant other away so that you have proper time to do this for the first time around. So you put your film in here. And then you put your film inside the gate. Okay. And then you close the gate. Once the gate is closed, you then take the film and follow the, follow the, the little lead here. The film goes into these creepy claws here. Okay. There it is. And you know, the film has perforations, so never force anything. I could feel that the film is properly in 
these claws and it's following the loop. And now I'm going to advance the film using my finger on the other side of the camera to press the shutter button and see if we can get this to advance a little bit. Whoa, that's looking pretty good. I'm very confident that I did that properly. Now you take the take up spool and you can see the arrows. There's an arrow here. Uh, film when on this spool is only half exposed. That phrase basically means that once you load this and you open your camera and all the film is now on this side, that means you shot the first half of your roll of film. So I'm now gonna roll it on here and gently, oh, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to advance the film to see if that's working. Now you have to be mindful of the loops. These are the loops that come in and out of the gate. And this loop here looks a little big because it's there's the, the guide, the white guide, and there's the film. What I'm simply gonna do is just adjust where the film goes through these claws by like one or two sprocket holes. Like move it up a bit. There we go. Let's try that. Let me just make sure we're wound up enough. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied that I did a decent job loading the film. It's difficult not to get the film sweats because the last thing you want to do is to load your film incorrectly, shoot an entire roll of film, send it out for processing, for scanning, only to get it back being blank. But, I mean, these are the things you have to go through to master loading and shooting film, regardless of what format you're shooting. So I'm going to close the back door. I'm going to move this counter to zero. Okay, that's zero. We're at 16 frames per second. I'm going to wind the camera. I usually wind it about 10 or 12 times. I'm always afraid that the spring is going to break. So far, I haven't experienced that. And then, of course, your lens is a fixed focus lens, meaning you don't need to focus, but you do need to set your f-stops. And there's a little line on the lens, and the wide open is f2.5, and it goes all the way up to f16 for this particular lens. So you will need a light meter. Set your light meter to um, 100 ISO, and the shutter rate for this camera is 1 30th of a second. And then you could properly uh, meter. Uh, generally speaking, if it's broad daylight, you're stopped down all the way to f16. If you need to stop the camera down more than f16, get what's called an ND filter, a neutral density filter. You can find them on eBay. You can find them just about anywhere. And you just hold it over the lens if it's really too bright for this speed film. Well, if you're shooting indoors, I highly recommend, and the FPP now stocks what we call a light panel and a bracket. So the camera, because it has a tripod socket, will be put on the bracket like so, and then you will put the light panel onto the cold shoe like so, and then you will be able to light an indoor scene if you're shooting like a birthday party or, you know, some family function or... And that's really it. That's a quick overview of the Revere 8 Model 88. You will shoot... Here, I'll show you. This is a test roll of film, by the way, so I'm not really worried about exposing it. You will shoot through the whole roll, the whole side. This counter will move when it's at 25 or a little bit more, you will hear the film run out if you listen carefully. And then when you're done, all of the film will be on this side. You just take this, flip it, 
put this over here as your empty, reload your film, shoot through a second time, and then you're done. Uh, one last thing, you will find a lot of Kodak Kodachrome film on eBay. Kodak Kodachrome Color Film ISO 25 processing is no longer available for this film. So the only way to process it is to process it yourself uh, because I don't think any lab is going to process this film for you. So definitely buy brand new film and you can get it right here, Film Photography Project at filmphotographystore.com. And hey, let's look at some frames I shot using this very camera, using FOMA 100 ISO black and white film. If you have any questions, you can always email me, michael at filmphotographyproject.com. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. Hope to hear from you soon.